come on this beautiful, beautiful winter day to worship as we continue to celebrate um, God's presence with us, to give thanks for this life that we've been given, um, and to be allow ourselves to be challenged uh, to help to bring about God's kingdom here on earth. Uh, would you join us in the song?
is from Isaiah. This is a little uh, time of discovery, and uh, with the virus being what it is, I'm just going to ask you to stay where you are uh, while we're in this heightened state. Um, but these are words for everybody to think of, children of all ages. I want you to just stop for a moment and think about a time when you maybe had a fight with your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad. When you had a fight and you were in that kind of grrr kind of mood. Anybody have one of those days? Yeah, when you're in that kind of mood? Do you ever feel like nobody likes me anymore? Have you ever felt like nobody likes me anymore? Because you got so mad at each other that you just feel like nobody likes you. In the word we have in the church, in the church we have a fancy word for that. And we're going to talk about that word today. It's forsaken. Forsaken. And sometimes all of us feel like maybe God doesn't like us anymore. Maybe there's something really hard going on in our life. Or maybe people are making fun of us. And we feel like God doesn't like us anymore. And so we decide we have been forsaken. That's the big word from the church. Forsaken. And maybe somebody else starts to tell us that God doesn't like us anymore. They will tell us that we are forsaken. But our scripture verse tells us today that that's just not true. Even when we feel like it, God says, you are not going to be called forsaken anymore. We're not going to let people call you forsaken anymore, and you're not going to call yourself forsaken anymore, because you are beloved. I love you. I will always love you. And that's what we need to remember when we get in that girl kind of mood, that God will always love us. Thank you for listening today. And I think Julie maybe has some. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if anybody is feeling like they want to go back um, and do a little art project, these are right here. <gasps> verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, but all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be turned forsaken, and your land shall no more be turned desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. We continue with a reading from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same of Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. 
and there are varieties of activities. But it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophesy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses.
that anybody who doesn't fit into those molds begins to feel forsaken. To feel that they have to fix themselves. To feel that they have to be something that God never intended them to be so that we could fit into this little mold. Be wealthy, be smart, be pretty, be whatever. I, I see it in the contrast between crime shows and this pose that's, right, there's, there's this bravado pose that U.S. crime shows have. Uh, and women are, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I don't know a police officer that goes to work in heels. I just don't know one that goes running around the streets in heels, right? So, but, but, but there's this look that we have to achieve. There's this, where did it come from? When did we decide we were not okay just as God created us? When did we decide that if we weren't, we were forsaken, unlovable, unwanted? I read this passage from Isaiah and I have, you know, always read it as, oh, God's going to fix it for me. Right? Um, that no longer will you be called forsaken. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. And we can certainly look at it that way, but I wonder if this passage doesn't also lay out a dream for us. A dream that maybe, just maybe one day, when God's kingdom is recognized on this earth, that society itself will transform. That society itself will stop calling people forsaken. Will stop identifying people as forsaken. Will stop demanding that people be a certain way so they are not forsaken. That is the dream, it seems to me, that Jesus laid out every time he reached out to heal someone that society had called outcast. That is the dream that he put forth for all of us to follow. And so we name the person forsaken when it is maybe society that needs to change our titles. God's not going to stop loving us. God doesn't call us forsaken. God doesn't call us unlovable. God doesn't call us outcast. So how do we as followers of Christ, bring about that kingdom of God in this place. How do we be little bits of society that start to say, I'm not okay with that? How do we raise our voices against the norm that tells us who we have to be and instead says, Wow, look at the beautiful body God has created. Look at the beautiful diversity God has created. Look at the gifts, the different gifts that we have in our society and honor and celebrate that difference in this world. How do we reach out and grow a movement? Because there are people all over this country, all over this world, that want that to happen. And there were people then that wanted this to happen. And there were people in Jesus' day that wanted that to happen and all throughout history. And is there a way we can finally put aside our own insecurities and call forth that kingdom in this place, in this time, and transform the world? so that no one is forsaken.
I always open it for thoughts. So I'm wondering what's kind of tweaking around in your minds this morning.
for having us. Just really interesting because they had a lot of people who aren't in, the, in that range. A lot of really interesting stories. Um, sad that that's not represented in um, He was saying that, that when we're so focused on youth, um, we miss all of the interesting stories of the middle aged and the elders. Because we're so focused on those stories about youth. I will just. Um, it's been a journey for me. To get rid of the biases and I'm still on that journey. Um, there are still days when I watch a newscast and my mind flips back to a look that I thought people needed and my mind still wants to reject someone that doesn't fit that look or that sound. And it's a journey for all of us because we've been so well conditioned. Um, but it's a journey worth taking because you start to see beauty everywhere. You start to hear wonder. You start to hear the wisdom everywhere when you break out of that conditioning. Um, yes? But. <laughs> yes. It's the same way with music. Yes. You know, the music that we had when I was in high school is still the best music ever. <laughs> 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 Satisfied, 
to those who continue to give up their time and their talents and their financial support to New Journey and to all ministries around this world. We hold you in the light of Christ. that didn't get written down that need to be lifted today. for the temple in Texas um, that was put through a hostage situation this weekend that they might find comfort and they might know that um, the nation is with them at this time. We hold you in the light of Christ. Gracious and loving God, you have heard the prayers we've spoken aloud, and you know those that remain in the silence of our hearts. Hear us now as we pray together as Jesus himself taught us to pray, creator of all that is, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, what is coming up as far as what we are offering to this world? Um, there are, uh, we have Spirit Journey Activities Tai Chi Fit on Wednesday as always at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, and then Spirit Reads on Monday, January 17th at 7 p.m. We are uh, continuing our conversation on, on the book, If God is Love, Don't Be a Jerk, by uh, John Pavlovich. There is a council meeting on Wednesday at 6.45. Um, we have sabbatical planning today for one more time. So if you'd like a voice in how we are spending our time while uh, we are all on sabbatical from one another, um, please stay after church today uh, and, and we will follow up on what we discussed last week. So, um, pledge cards. You should have uh, gotten a pledge card if you are a member or active person in our church. If not, um, there are some in the back of the sanctuary, and we would ask that you would turn those in as soon as possible. We are behind. Uh, that's on, on us, the leadership, mostly me, um, being behind. But it does help us plan our budget for the following year um, if we have some idea of what people are able to offer to help support the ministry of this church. So please turn those in as soon as possible, and thank you to those who already have. And if you'd rather fill it out online, that's available as well through the PREES, uh, our database software. So, um, I'm not seeing other announcements, but don't forget, 
that in two weeks, on the 30th, excuse me. Now, excuse me. Oh, I have some information. Well, can we have some information to share? If you don't mind, come on, ladies. We can just, we'll take over. what we're good at. Meetings.
that's interesting. I have determined through personal experience that when attending the annual meeting, one should never, under any circumstances, raise your hand. <laughs> I did that once and went home as moderator. You will never forcibly be forced into accepting a slot on the slate. Now, the key word there is forcibly. Hmm. Now, here is one that's to the point. Um, food. Oh, and they have another comment on here. It mentions our friend Shar. Shar is a friend of ours, and she was at our meeting. What's the comment? It says, Shar. Cute or eerie? Strange. Read that again. Okay. Shar. Cute or eerie? Shar. Cute or eerie? Shar. Cute or eerie? That's a strange thing to say about anyone. I wonder who wrote that. Maybe it's not a comment on Char. Think about it. Put the two comments together. Food. Char, cute or eerie? I get it. It's about one of those boards with food on it to snack on. Exactly. Charcuterie. Oh, don't say it. It's French. Oh. Personally, I don't think that smelly food on a board is going to attract anyone to a meeting. Someone said it's just a fancy word for adult lunchable. <laughs> or maybe it's French for, I'd like a sandwich by words of bread. Now, the Bible does say man does not live by bread alone. Hmm. Maybe cookies would be a good idea. Maybe. But even if you served a full meal, remember when there used to be potlucks after annual meeting? Even then, some members will not attend on that Sunday. Listen to this interesting comment. You try your best, but are constantly judged. So why participate? Oh, it doesn't sound like a past annual meeting was a very positive experience for that person. Well, here's another one along the same lines. Um, it's hard to be at a meeting where you're the newest member and it's evident that your comments are not appreciated. Oh, ouch! Wow, that sounds like a passage from Matthew that I just recently reread. It's the one about if you get a two by four in your eye and your brother has a toothpick in his. Okay, or to put it so it's more easily understood, you can't complain and talk about other people if your own house is a mess. So we're getting personal now. You know, it's sad when people say things without thinking. Emotions can take over and feelings get hurt. I can remember annual meetings at the church of my youth. They quite often turned into shouting matches. Well, it boils down to the fact that we want our meeting to be a positive experience. The last several years have been stressful for everyone. COVID has changed our lives. We haven't had many safe places or times to sit down and visit. So, let's talk. It's easy to keep things going along, doing the same old routine. What are your dreams? Let's have a conversation about them. No judging. There aren't any bad ideas. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe the Lindahl commercial was in that category. We took a brave step several years ago when we became New Journey. Is the work done? Are you content? We aren't. We know that not everyone is comfortable coloring inside the lines. Stepping out of the box. You have the strength to become whatever you want to be. Let's keep moving forward and not get complacent. 
We can't even imagine what this community of faith is enabled to accomplish. Tracy has done a fantastic job as moderator. And we know that she would love to keep that position forever, but she has hit her term limit. It takes a village, that means all of us, to keep the furnace going and the lights on and the music flowing 52 weeks a year. And people just like you have what it takes to be on the church council or serve on the committee or usher or greet or plant flowers or work with our children. Your voice is important. You are needed. It's not a huge commitment. You will not be judged, usually. We can all begin by staying after worship on the 30th for our annual meeting. You have a voice, but it only works when you use it. And it's just once a year. No need to rush home. The Vikings, as usual, are not playing. <laughs> Remember, the church ladies were always around, keeping an eye on things. Stepping in when needed, we will be back. <laughs>
wherever you go, that all will know the love of God through our work, because we are the body of Christ. Go and may the peace of Christ go with you. And can I invite my uh, helpers to come forward? Any helpers that want to come forward?